My group is doing the tundra, and today you will learn more about the tundra than you ever imagined. The average temperature is usually between negative 20 and negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. The warmest it ever gets is 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which makes it harder for plants and animals to survive. The average precipitation is about 20 centimeters a year. The Arctic fox has well-furred paws for gripping the snow, small rounded ears for hearing well, and white fur to keep it warm. It eats birds, lemmings, marine life, and any other leftover animals. It lives in the Arctic regions of Asia, Europe, North America, and the North Pole. It is hunted for its fur. The muskox has 24 inch long hair, a furry undercoat that keeps it warm. The arctic wolf is its main predator, but they've been forced to move into the foothills, which makes them more vulnerable to the grizzly bears. Muskox mostly eat herbs such as crowberry, blackberry, and willow. People use the muskox for fur and meat. The tundra grizzly is a creamy yellow on the back with brownish legs. Besides having a thick shaggy coat of hair, they have layers of fat to insulate them. They are well suited to the cold climate. When winter comes, they will bed down with leaves and sticks. 75% of the tundra bears live off of plants alone. It lacks natural enemies, but still is endangered. The ermine is a very unique animal. The ermine turns white in the winter to blend in with the snow. It's usually chocolate brown with a white underbelly with a black tip on its tail that stays when it turns white. It also has sharp teeth to hunt for prey. It has a very flexible spine to get away from predators. The ermine eats insects, rodents, and rabbits. The ermine is also very useful because it helps keep the insect, rodent, and rabbit's population down. The snowy owl. The male snowy owl is white to camouflage its body from the predators. The female is spotted to blend in from the male's plumage and to hide from other predators. The males have long claws like weapons to catch and kill its prey. Bum, 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 onto the plants. The arctic moss has tiny leaves, rootlets, so it is not stiff. It has a very slow growth system. It can grow underwater, so it can be a home for fish. It warms up the floor for other plants. The pasque flower stays low to the ground to keep it out of the cold climate. It's covered in fine silky hair to insulate it. It has many colored petals. It is very useful because it can treat different eye diseases. The bearberry is a very useful plant. Its fruit can be cooked with other food and eaten. Since the bearberry is a low-growing plant, it can stay out of the wind chill. Its fine, silky leaves also help keep it warm. Its roots can be turned into tea to treat a constant cough. Bears also like to feast on it. In the tundra, there are many different kinds of symbiotic relationships, parasitism, mutualism, and commensalism. Parasitism is where one organism benefits and one suffers. An example is the grizzly and the bearberry. Because the grizzly eats the bearberry, so the grizzly gets lunch and the plants die. Mutualism is where both organisms benefit. An example is hunters and bearberry, because the hunter kills the animals that would eat the plant. The plant lives and the hunter has meat. Commensalism is where one organism is helped and the other is not helped or harmed. An example is the arctic moss and other plants. The arctic moss warms the floor for the other plants and the arctic moss is not helped or harmed. You know the many animals and plants from the tundra, but to make it easier, we created a food web, so let me explain. The sun gives energy to the bearberry and the pasqua flower. The bearberry is eaten by the snowy owl and the grizzly. The pasqua is eaten by the grizzly, and the snowy owl is eaten by the grizzly. Long-term changes have many effects on the tundra, like global warming, because the snow melts and it gets hotter, so the animals used to the cold weather have to adapt. The sun is very important because it creates light and warms the tundra. Abiotic and biotic factors have great influences on each other, like the snow makes it hard for a tree to grow. The tundra is located in the northern part of Canada and Russia, also in the southern part of Greenland. I hope you enjoy our video on the tundra.